Throughout the fledgling years of paleoanthropology, it was believed that our species, Homo sapiens, evolved relatively recently. In one event, probably somewhere in northeastern Africa, then migrated out in a single wave to spread across the world, a world that for the most part was long empty of other hominin species. That is to say all of the bipedal great apes that evolved from the Chilka, the chimp human last common ancestor, roughly six million years ago. However, as studies continue, numerous revelatory discoveries in archaeology, anthropology and genetics have challenged that stale narrative. Increasingly, the mounting evidence paints a far more complex picture of a genetic swarm of numerous interrelated species living contemporaneously, often inhabiting the same regions while occupying different niches and in some cases even interbreeding. Unlike virtually every other clade of organism whose representatives display a rich radiation of interrelated forms, Homo sapiens are the last recognised living member of a once diverse and widespread hominin family tree. Furthermore, the age of anatomically modern humans as a species has been pushed back from an estimated 100,000 years before present to an approximated 300,000 years. And so it is now recognised that our species is the result of several populations interbreeding with other species in multiple regions over hundreds of thousands of years, and now we have the genetic markers to prove it. So imagine for a moment a world in which there were numerous human-like species of various sizes, forms, behaviours, cultures and consciousness. Some large, robust, cold-adapted super-predators, others peaceful herbivores, others still were relatively tiny, standing at approximate three foot tall at maturity. Social species, solitary species, semi-arboreal species, many exposed to and aware of each other, some populations mingling and merging, others likely warring to the point of extermination. The assumed age of extinction for many of these non-sapiens hominin species keeps crawling forward, some now suspected to have survived into the late Pleistocene or even early Holocene. And despite our historical tendency to portray them as brutish troglodytes, there is compelling evidence to the contrary. In 2010, in a Siberian cave, a tooth and finger bone were discovered and dated to an approximate 70,000 years before present. An inquiry into their genetics surprised the paleoanthropological world by revealing a hitherto unrecognised species of sapien-like hominin, the Denisovans. Within the same sedimentary strata were found a green stone bracelet with a hole drilled in it by a steady state drill, and a thick awl made from bone and presumed to be used for sewing hides into a garment. This suggests at least one non-sapien species was inventing and employing high cultural mechanical techniques as far back as 70,000 years ago. Assuming that anatomically modern humans are 300,000 years old, that gives us more than a staggering 250,000 years of our species living in a comparatively very different world to us indeed. Add to this equation all the now extinct megafauna that they shared the planet with, and one starts to get the picture. Compared to the controlled environments of life in our modern world, Ice Age Earth looked like something out of a fantasy novel. Can you see the possible effects living in that reality could have upon a human mind or a culture at large? Can you feel how different our ancestors' collective sense of self and other would have been? I suggest that as a result, the sapiens' mind became hardwired to expect sapiens-like but non-sapiens others to co-inhabit their world and that this impulse is what inspires so much of our historical preoccupation with fantastic anthropomorphic non-sapien species. 250,000 years, anything could have happened. What other exotic extinct hominin species have we yet to even rediscover? Inevitably there are many. What cultures could they have had? What art and language types? What feats could they have achieved? What could have they built? Could they have even domesticated now extinct animal species? How did they express their unique forms of genius? 250,000 years. Think about it. The mind boggles.